Hi, I'm Ryan Boyle, Senior Economist for Northern Trust. I recently had dinner with a relative who helps to manage a residential care home. She observed that it had become much harder to find workers, a challenge she had never seen in her 20 years. She asked, where did all the workers go? She may have meant it rhetorically, but I responded seriously, providing a long list of contributing factors. First, many workers have taken better jobs. A recent PBS poll found that 38% of workers changed jobs in the past two years, which is five percentage points higher than it was in 2018. Younger workers and those earning lower wages were the most likely to have moved, usually into better jobs that offer better pay. Turnover in U.S. labor markets remains high, with the Bureau of Labor Statistics showing the rates of quits and hires holding well above their pre-pandemic norms. Once someone finds a better paying job, it will be hard for their old employer to coax them back. Next, some workers can't find childcare. Daycare centers require close contact and all shuttered in the pandemic lockdowns. Their employees moved to other professions and have not returned. While the labor market has broadly recovered, employment in daycare centers remains 8% below its February 2020 level. Without childcare, young parents may be deferring their re-entry to the workforce. On the older end of the spectrum, many of the formerly employed have retired. Labor force participation for workers over 55 is holding about 1.5 percentage points lower than its pre-2020 level. We saw in the last cycle that a tight labor market can coax older workers back into employment, but thus far, they have not returned at scale. Next, we must give some thought to those who are dealing with lingering aftereffects of a COVID infection. Long COVID, as it is called, is difficult to measure, as experiences of the disease vary widely. Over the summer, the Census Bureau estimated 2 to 4 million people were not working due to long COVID complications. And lastly, we can't ignore mortality. While the elderly were at greatest risk, the U.S. Centers for Disease Control has recorded over 260,000 deaths involving COVID-19 among people under 65. Amid all of these limitations, the challenges for recruitment can seem maddening. Higher wage offers can't create new candidates. More entry of younger workers, as well as a normalization of immigration flows, will help to improve labor supply but these are not easy or rapid cures. In sum, pandemic-related dislocations in the labor market don't have one tidy explanation nor any easy remedies. There is a long list of factors that we will be watching to gauge whether the labor market has found its new equilibrium.